What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the Realistic Career Mode, this is episode number 14. We're starting today's with stuff on the back of our big win over Watford to cut the gap on Aston Villa to 6 points with 5 games to go in the race for 7th place. Top 6 ain't gonna happen, but we're the outsiders, we're the dark horses for that 7th and final European spot, Europa Conference League. Never played in it before in this year in the inaugural season of it. We have that chance on the back of the win over the Hornets. So first game of the final five coming today. Brighton away, Graham Potter side here at the Amex. Heading into the game, desperately needing back-to-back -back wins at the worst possible start. And it's just been the theme recently. In the games before Watford, we had back-to-back -back losses to Chelsea and Arsenal. Where we started off poorly, conceding in the opening 10 minutes, conceding in the opening 25 here. But this was... Adam Webster with an absolutely brilliant finish from the center half for his first goal of the season. And isn't that just typical? In fact, I said this in the very last episode. Why is it when you go into a big game, there's always like an, either an unlikely goal scorer against you or someone who's not scored a single goal all season long. Against Chelsea, it was Kante getting his first of the year. Against Brighton, it's centre-half Adam Wempster giving the host the lead and we trail early. So once again, we fall behind in the game for the third time in our last four. And right before the break, still trailing by a goal. Our two golden chances, one for Broha denied by Sanchez and then with a final kick at the half. Oh my goodness, in from the Tigers, sporadic game time this year for the teenage talent, Keen Lewis Potter. How on earth did I miss the target there? And at half time, I was thinking it's just going to be one of those games. Haven't played especially poorly, but find myself trailing. And in the second half, Amos after the restart, we should have been 2-0 down. Sam Johnson with a save on Waipu right at the near post there, keeping it at just 1-0. But I knew there was going to be another goal in this game, so I wasn't going to give up the spike trailing. A couple minutes after the save from Johnston, we come on the break here down this right-hand side. Tino Livramento dinks it over Cucurella, finds Ritsu Doan, our player of the season. As Broha holds up the ball, he offloads to Dieo, who gets his first of the year. And what an important one as well. Really nice little build-up for that goal. There. Ritsu into Broha and Dieo with the finish. Top bins. It's 1 1. And I was thinking, okay, there's definitely more goals in this game. There's over half an hour to go. Only a win will do, don't forget. Draws now are going to feel like defeat. So I was pushing and I was pressing. And with 15 minutes to go, golden chance to take lead for the first time in the game. What a save by Sanchez, who is such an underrated shot stopper. Denying Nathan Redmond in the near post. Still 1-1. And momentum totally changed. Ever since I got that goal, it was all Southampton. 12 minutes on the clock. Still tied at 1-1. Looking for that late winner. Jan Bednarek pops that wide towards Liveramento, to the former. Chelsea fullback into JWP. Finds defeat of the goal scorer, Dieo. Dieo. Holds it up, pops it out wide towards Ritsu, down the right-hand side. First time ball wall, Prowse picks it up, back heels to Broha, and Broha smacks it in. And with 10 minutes to go, what a lovely team goal. And I've talked about it, and I'll say it again. Team goals in this year's FIFA are so, so hard. But when they do come off, they look absolutely fantastic. Great first time ball by Ritsu. What a back heel by JWP and Broha with the finish. You'll notice this season, I am trying to score a few more team goals than average uh, due to Southampton's really nice possession style of play. And it looks so cool when it comes off. We're in front for the first time in the game. It's Broha the hero, not for the first time this season. But in stoppage time, closing out back-to-back -back wins and a huge three points. Oh, fade me. Mwepu with the finish makes it 2-2. And I've talked about it so many times. Late goals in FIFA are just so, so common and at times unavoidable. Brighton find the leveller in stoppage time. It is 2-2. And from kickoff, after I surrendered possession, wouldn't you just know it? Yep, it reminded me of the Leicester Spurs game earlier this year with that absolutely wild, wild finish where Leicester were leading by a goal and then Spurs scored these two goals deep into stoppage time to win it. And obviously it sent the away fans into absolute wild celebrations uh, at the King Power. But yeah, even so, Mwepu with two goals in stoppage time. Look at that, three goals in the final 10 minutes. 
and Brighton win it. It was, it was Bergwijn who scored that late winner for Spurs in that 3-2 comeback against Leicester. And it really reminded me of that, you know. I remember that game very well. So dramatic. Leicester surrendered possession after Spurs bagged their level. And then Spurs went on the other end and, and scored the goal to, to win the game. And totally flipped the script. Exactly what happened there. And Waipu bagging a brace. And it's over now. It is finished. Four games to go. The gap is now nine. It's over. Yeah, we ain't going to catch Aston Villa now. Any chance whatsoever hinged on us getting a win in that game. I was seconds away. And not only did I throw away two points, I threw away all three. Oh, my goodness. Just fade me. I mean, seriously, it's it's over, honestly. I, just, I was so frustrated because, again, late goals, like, we, we talk about it often. They're, they're just, like, to me, they're just a bit too common, you know. And I... I'm not going to sit here and blame the game mechanics for the reason I lost that game. There's only one person to blame for me losing that game. It's me. I bottled it. I choked it. And I'm not even going to try and deny it. But they are just a bit too frequent to me. Because as soon as I surrendered possession from kickoff, I knew that Brian was going to come on the other end and score that game winner. Exactly what happened. I, just, I do feel he needs to tone it down a little bit. Because it's a little bit too obvious at times. If you know what I mean. Like I said, I knew as soon as I surrendered possession, Brian would go and score another and win the game. It's exactly what happened there. They're just a little bit too common for me. You know, three goals getting scored in the final 10 minutes. It's very rare for that sort of stuff to happen. But even so, I can't really blame the game mechanics there. It was just a lack of composure, concentration, and I absolutely bottled it. So no chance we're going to make Europe now with four games to go. Obviously, mathematically, whilst there is still a chance, I will still compete for it. Following game, Crystal Palace, Patrick Vieira side. Can I just say real briefly, what a fantastic job Vieira has done this season. I mentioned it a few times this year. He, he's done a great job in his first year at Selhurst Park. And after battering Everton on the weekend to get Palace to the FA Cup semi-final, they going to be secure in mid-table now. He, he's done a great job this year. You've got to give the Frenchman some credit. But taking on Crystal Palace here, we took the lead early through Ritu Doan. Czech Coyate would level it for the Eagles, but 15 minutes to go. Well, he thought he'd scored a game winner against Brighton, and he thought he'd scored a game winner in this game against Crystal Palace. Armando Broja did indeed score the game winner this time. This time, I kept my composure. 14 minutes on the clock, and unlike against Brighton, I did not surrender too late chance and too late goals. Held on for the big three points. And it's it's so typical because, like, after the game, I was thinking, okay, yeah, we got the win, but as you'll see here with Man City and Liverpool, neck and neck with three games to go in the table, though City do have the game in hand. Aston Villa had 55 points. They remain nine points clear of us as they matched their result on that weekend. And it's so typical. Three games to go now. Like, mathematically, if you want to play devil, advocate there is still the most unlikeliest of chances of us getting top seven but it's about as likely as me mar marrying Jennifer Lopez um you know like <laughs> it's so typical but it seems so often this happens to me like whenever I'm chasing an objective when I start to feel there's a chance of it happening like after the Watford game that's that's when I start to struggle like as, as soon as I start to feel the pressure I just crack and crumble underneath it but when I feel like the chance is gone and it's all over like after the defeat to Brighton I'm fine you saw the game against Crystal Palace there we only conceded one shot in the game my defense was watertight and I won the game 2-1 and probably should have won it by more it, it really is just a mentality thing and it's something that I need to work on Doxy boy get more confident get yourself more composed bro because seriously it's happened again and again and again in both FIFA and Football Manager I mean geez if you watch my Armenia Bielfeld career mode you would have known back in season 3 of that one I bottled an 8 point lead at the top of the table to lose the title and again it's you know we were outsiders to qualify for Europe, but it is it is pretty gutting knowing now with three games to go in the Premier League. As you can see, Brentford away, Liverpool at home, and Leicester away. Three tough games there. Brentford battling for survival, Liverpool going for the title, and the Fox at the King Power as well. As you have to see this as well. Before the third and final game, Orlando Broja. Hey Gaffer, not sure what's going to happen now, but I want to say I've really enjoyed my loan spell at the club. I hope we can make it a permanent deal. And I hope we can bring him in on a permanent deal as well. Armando Broja. Joint top scorer this season wants to stay at Southampton. So we've been talking about realistically how we do things in this career mode. That is the aim of the game. And if Broha wants to stay, if Broha doesn't want to return to Stamford Bridge, he wants to remain here permanently. Well, realistically, is it too far-fetched to suggest he would want to leave Chelsea in the summer and come here permanently? If that's what he's told me in a private conversation, 
I don't think so. So that means in the summer I will definitely be making Broha my number one target to return on a permanent deal. Had you not had that player conversation with me there, I'd probably try and bring him back on a loan next year or look for another target. But instead, because he now says he wants to stay and he has been great this year, he won't get much game time at Chelsea next season behind Lukaku and Werner as well. Yep, I think Broja coming in on a permanent deal would not be too unrealistic. I guess we could include like a buyback clause or something. But still, for the third and final game of today's episode here, we know now European dreams have died. Uh, taking on Brentford away. And the community stadium is now in the game, by the way. Uh, for those that aren't uh, aware of this, the community stadium is now in the game. Guys, if you want to do a Brentford career mode, now's the time. The stadium is in the game and it looks absolutely fantastic as well. Great team to do a career mode with. Of course, they were my team at the start of year 22. Definitely recommend them. I had so much fun using the bees, and now their real stadium is in the game. Guys, give them a go. Great team to use in West London. But taking on Brentford away, uh, scrapping for survival now. They needed a win more than we did in this game, so I wasn't surprised to lead through Brian and Buemo, but five minutes to go before the break. Thomas Tuchel, name your price. I mean, he just scored a tap in, and I'm talking like he just scored a 35-yard weldy, but even so, 11th goal in 33 games. Armando Broja with three in his last three. 11th of the season and averaging one every three this year. Thomas Tuchel, as soon as that transfer window opens, I'm getting you on the train to Southampton. We're having a chat, mate. I want Armando here next season, permanently. He scored our level, and whilst we did have 45 minutes to find a winner, I couldn't do so. Final score in West London. Brentford won, Southampton won, and the poor run of form continues for the Saints. Yep, just two wins in our last six games. And that is why, as we come towards the end of the season, and my poor form has been really painful to witness... There's no chance us making Europe. We know that now. Mathematically, after the game, that will confirm it. Two games to go. Liverpool at home, our final one at St. Mary's this season. And Leicester away, who have nothing to play for at the King Power Stadium. Our season is done. The question is now, where do we finish? We can finish as high as eighth in the table, which I would certainly take. Or we can finish as low as 14th as well. Is it 14th or 13th? Yep, it's 14th place. So yeah, 8th to 14th. Those positions we can finish in the final two games. And whilst there's nothing technically to play for, I do want the highest possible finish for prize money and momentum to build on. But that will end today's episode of the Realistic Crimmer, guys. Big thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, if you haven't, please drop a like. Most of you all have a fantastic day and I'll see you for the season finale, the final episode of season one very soon.